So if you'd like to achieve this, this is what you need to do. What's up you guys, it's Sam here and today I'm going to be teaching you how I turned an empty glass tank into this little reef. So if you're a beginner, you're thinking of starting a reef tank and you want to achieve something along these lines, by the end of this video you're going to know exactly what I did to achieve this. So please give this video a like and subscribe, there are so many reef videos especially coming, but also many pet videos, we're going to be upgrading leopard gecko cages soon, there's plenty coming. So hit that like button and subscribe and let me teach you how to turn an empty glass tank into a little thriving reef like this. To start off, I'm just going to put it out there that this is how I set up my reef. I'm not saying it's the only way to do it, as I'm going to say I bought aragonite. You could go bare bottom. There are so many ways that you can do this, but today is how did I set up my tank. So I'm going to take you through the whole process. There are many other ways to do it. Always do your research before setting up a tank. I'm not saying this is the only way or the right way. This is what I did to achieve these results. So if you'd like to achieve this, this is what you need to do. I started off by purchasing an empty Bo UTL 550 tank. I would highly recommend these for any beginner. It has everything included. There's no sump below the tank that you've got the two different setups going. All of the filtration is in the back of the tank. So it's a real ready to go tank. So I'd highly recommend that one. Started off with the empty tank and then added in a layer of aragonite and then of course rock work. Now you can start with dry rock or live rock. I would recommend starting with live rock. That would help kick off the cycle, get you going a lot quicker. But to be honest, I did start with dry rock. I started from absolute scratch. If I had to do it again, I would recommend getting live rock though. That to me was a mistake that I made. I wanted the purple rocks, but you'll see after many, many years, they've grown in with algae and coral. You can't even see that the rocks were purple. So starting with dry purple rock was kind of useless. I should have just started with live rock. And then you're going to need some lights. Depending on the corals that you want to grow, will decide what type of lighting you need. So I've got the Z light, ZA1201 lights. I have three of them on this tank. I'll take the hood up just now and show you the filtration and the lighting. I would recommend those lights again. They give this beautiful, almost pinkish tinge, easy to control. So I'll link them down below. But do your research. If you are wanting to grow SPS coral, you might need something brighter. But these work brilliantly. And once again, if this is what you want to achieve, the ZA1201 lights are what are on my reef tank. So we've got our aragonite, our rock, our lights. And then, of course, you're going to need salt water. You'll have to decide, are you mixing salt water? Do you have access to natural salt water? Again, that is very much up to you. And then we'll go through our filtration. So all that I have on this reef tank is a heater, a protein skimmer, and then a return pump. Just because it does have a little filtration system in the back, there is a return pump circling around there. So that's about it, you guys. <laughs> it really is as simple as that. This tank has no fancy filtration equipment, nothing like that. But again, I am keeping a lot of, or only, <laughs> soft corals. So if you wanted to go with more advanced corals like your LPS or your SPS, you may need to add some more filtration onto this. Once again, though, if you'd like to achieve this, you don't need much more than a protein skimmer, in my opinion. Uh, filtration wise. <laughs> Alright you guys, so we've got the basics of the hardware done. If you want me to just go over it one quick last time, we've got the aragonite, the rock, salt water, we need lights, we've got the protein skimmer, a heater just to keep the tank warm, and then a return pump to keep things cycling. And it is literally as simple as that. That is all I have on this tank and it is all I've had on this tank since the beginning. The biggest thing when it comes to a reef tank is time. It's the worst thing that anyone that's new into the hobby wants to hear. But to be honest, this tank is over six years old now. I should actually find exactly how old it is. It could be even older than that. So that's not to say that this tank has always looked like this from day one. You do need to start somewhere with an empty tank, absolutely no corals, nothing in there, and you'll build it with time. All you need is time to allow your tank to stabilize. This tank is so stable now. It's, it's just such a pleasure. I have to do so little maintenance. You may find you also need to help your reef tank when you start up. You might be needing to do more water changes, just be more involved. And as time goes on, the tank almost takes over and just does its own thing. To set up a reef tank like this is extremely simple. Get your basics right, install the correct hardware for what you are wanting to achieve from the beginning. As I say, with regards to lights, depending what corals you want to grow, make sure you get the right lights. 
Other than that, it is extremely simple. You need lights to grow your corals and you want to try and keep your, your water as clean as possible. It is really not as scary as you think. I used to be in the fresh water hobby and I would not go into the salt water world because of everyone saying how difficult it is. You guys, this reef tank is so much easier than any fresh water tank I have ever had. So I would highly recommend starting a little salt water reef, especially if you want to go with the soft corals. They are so easy. All you need is this basic, basic little setup, if not even more simple than a fresh water, and a little bit of maintenance in the beginning, some water changes, keeping everything clean. But now the tank does its little thing. So I'm going to take the camera off. Let me show you my filtration and my lighting. I did customize the lighting for this tank just so that you guys can have an idea. And hopefully that kicks you off to start your own reef tank. I'm going to lift up the lid here so that you can see exactly the hardware I have. These are the ZA1201Z lights. I customized the lid. It's not the easiest for you guys to see to install the three lights side by side. And then the Bo UTL550 tank has all its filtration in the back. So there you'll see my protein skimmer. I'll link that down below. That is the only hardware I have in the back here. There's some live rock in that first compartment. There's absolutely nothing other than a bleached anemone in that compartment. And then the return pump is in this last one. So it really is as simple as that, guys. And there is the heater over there. So heater, skimmer, lights, a return pump, some aragonite, live rock, salt water, Whoop, sorry, and you have yourself a little reef tank. I hope you feel a little bit more confident on starting your own reef tank, that it really is a lot easier than what you'd expect. If you'd want to achieve something as simple as this, it's really, really simple. So I say go for it. All the links for my equipment will be linked down below for a Bow UTL 550 tank, just like this. The protein scheme I have, the lights I have, and then all you need is a little return pump, a heater, some aragonite, and some rock and salt water. And you're good to go. And time. Don't forget time. Please like this video if you guys enjoyed, and especially if it helped you. And subscribe. There are so many videos on the way, especially the reef tank videos. I have so much planned. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. <laughs>